Resurrection Sunday from all of us to you. Happy Resurrection Sunday. We know that over 2,000 years ago when our Lord and Savior died, and today we'll commemorate his rising from the grave when he rose up, when he got up. So we're going to all just celebrate his day, his rising, and we're going to lift up the Lord's name. How many of you love to sing the Lord? How many of you love to lift his name up high? So help us sing this morning, wherever you are, wherever you're in your bathroom, wherever you're in your kitchen. Let's lift up the Lord's name. Let's lift his name up high.
wherever you are sitting, if you're in your living room, you're in the bathroom, you're in the kitchen, let's just worship the Lord. Worship the Lord. Come on. If you're under the sound of my voice, just worship the Lord. Just worship the Lord. You know, in 2 Chronicles chapter 7, the Bible says that after Solomon finished building the temple, it says fire from heaven, it came down and said that the priests, they couldn't even enter the temple and the people and they prayed because the, the spirit of the Lord, the glory of the Lord was so, was so strong that they couldn't even see and the people, they bowed down with their faces to the ground. So this morning, wherever you are, just bow down bow down bow down and worship him he is worthy he is worthy worship the lord bow down
has made I will rejoice and be glad in it for the Lord is good and he is worthy to be praised we're so thankful to have you here today on resurrection Sunday morning some refer to it as Easter but most of us refer to it as resurrection Sunday morning right early in the morning he got up from the grave with all power in his hand and so we are so thankful today that he got up. Might you pray with me? Father, in the name of Jesus, thank you for sending your son. Your word says, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, so that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Thank you, Jesus, for the ultimate sacrifice on a cross at Calvary. Thank you that you died for us. But early Sunday morning, you got up with all power in your hand. God, we're so thankful to be here this morning. We're thankful, God, that you have given us another opportunity. It's another Resurrection Sunday. I'm still here. It's another Resurrection Sunday. I'm not gone. It's another Resurrection Sunday. I can lift up my hand. It's another res Resurrection Sunday. I can wave my hand. It's another Resurrection Sunday. I can wash my own face. It's another Resurrection Sunday. I can lift up both holy hands. It's another Resurrection Sunday that I can look up to the hills from which cometh my help. It's another Resurrection Sunday, God. Though we're dealing with coronavirus, God, we thank, we're thankful to know that you're still God and God all by yourself. So we thank you for that today. God, I pray for those who are in the hospitals, those who are in the ICU, those who are at home recovering, those who've been quarantined, those who are going through. I pray for President Trump. I pray for Governor Cooper. I pray, God, that you would get the glory out of everything that we do. I thank you today, God, for being God and God all by yourself. I pray today that you would just move throughout this world. 
God, that, that you would touch folks and that you would touch your people and they would understand that we're just not dressing up if it was traditional Resurrection Sunday morning. It's not about just having the nice suit and the dress, but it's ultimately about what you did on the cross. So God, save even this morning thousands all over this world. I pray are saved today because of what you did over 2,000 years ago. We thank you now. Bless this service. Let it be all about you. Get the glory. In Jesus' name, somebody ought to shout, amen. Well, again, we welcome you. We thank God for all of you that are here this morning, whether you're watching us via uh, YouTube or whether you're watching us Facebook Live or even if you're watching us or listening to us on 92.1 Choice FM, we're so thankful what God is doing and what God has done. Uh, this is our second watch for this morning. We have met m many early this morning at 6 a.m. I thank God for those who are watching us Facebook Live as we were out at the new property, at the spot, and the site that God is going to raise up uh, the new Juniper Level Missionary Baptist Church. And so I thank God for those who got up right early this morning and that you witnessed the Word of God and what a powerful Word of God and what a powerful time we've already had. And so I thank God for what God is doing in this place. We, we're reminded of this week that this week, again, from Monday through Friday, we will continue with partnering with Wake County Schools so that our kids can have lunches. They start at 11 o'clock to 1, 11 to 1. And that's right at 9104 Sauls Road, Raleigh, North Carolina, at Juniper Level Missionary Baptist Church. Uh, you watch the announcements or you'll see the announcements, and we thank God for that. Uh, continuously on Tuesday at 7 p.m., Tuesday at 7 p.m., the call in for Bible study, and as well as, well as on Thursday, call in at Bible study at 12. Uh, this week on Wednesday, we'll be back via YouTube or as well as Facebook. Well, I'm excited about getting into the Word of God. If you're ready on this Resurrection Sunday morning, it's time to get into the Word. I've, it's been bubbling inside, and many preachers all over the country, all over the world, it, it, it is something about Resurrection Sunday morning. And might I call your attention to Romans chapter 2, Romans chapter 2, beginning at verse number 1. Romans chapter 2, beginning at verse number 1, I'm using the Message Bible. Whichever Bible you use or version you use will be appropriate. Romans chapter 2, beginning at verse number 1, those people are on a dark spiral downward. But if you think that leaves you on the high ground where you can point your finger at others, think again. Every time you criticize someone, you condemn yourself. It takes one to know one. Judgmental criticism of others is a well-known way of escaping detection in your own crimes and misdemeanors. But God isn't so easily diverted. He sees right through all such smoke screens and holds you to what you've done. You didn't think, did you? that just by pointing your fingers at others, you would distract God from seeing all your misdoing and from coming down on you hard? Or did you think that because he's such a nice God, he'll let you off the hook? Better think this one through from the beginning. God is kind, but he's not soft. In kindness, he takes us firmly by the hand and leads us into a radical life change. You're not getting by with anything. Every refusal and avoidance of God adds fuel to the fire. The day is coming when it's going to blaze hot and high. God's fury and righteous judgment. Make no mistake, in the end, of, you'll get what, what's coming to you. Real life for those who work on God's side. But to those who insist on getting their own way, 
and take the path of least resistance, fire. Can you help me by looking at your neighbor and say, neighbor, oh neighbor, come and see for yourself. Come see for yourself. Will you pray with me? Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for life, health, and strength. We love you, God, because you first loved us. We find ourselves on this Resurrection Sunday morning thanking you for all that you have done, knowing, God, that he who has begun a good work is well able to finish. Lord, have mercy what he started. God, have your way. I can't preach, but you surely can. Speak, Holy Spirit, that they will not hear from me, but hear directly from you. Spirit of the living God, fall fresh on us this morning. Have your way now. In Jesus' name, save somebody. Bring the backslider back home. God, let them see and know you in a better way. We thankful for, we're thankful thankful for what you're going to do. In Jesus' name, somebody ought to shout, amen. Come see for yourself. My brothers and my sisters, when we look at this text and we look at where we found ourselves. We found ourselves on last watch where Jesus is speaking and saying uh, to all of them on Wednesday night. He has gathered the group together and a lot is not known about Jesus. I'm talking about Wednesday night at the revival. While we were there, not a lot is said about Holy Wednesday. But then we find that Jesus on Thursday, he goes and he is arrested and he goes to trials. And we know about what happened on Friday. All Friday morning, he goes through and everything is that was written in the word was fulfilled. And the Bible says that he died. And then he's placed in a grave by Nicodemus and Joseph, Amethia, these are the ones who left from being in that Sanhedrin council. They, they, they were hiding. They were in the closet, but they come out of the closet and move now to take Jesus' body, and they take his body now to a borrowed tomb, and there Friday night and all day Saturday and Sunday picks up, and here we are today in Romans 2, but yet and still in all of the gospel. Synoptic as well as John records this resurrection Sunday morning. And so we're here today where Paul is writing about folks who are judgmental. Come to Romans 2. We find that Paul says in Romans 2, verse 1 through 7, as he sums it up by simply saying that you cannot be judgmental just because you, 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 God is working in you and you're not the same that you used to be. Don't think that you have graduated and matriculated into a higher level just because of the fact you don't do some of the things that you used to do. Don't just believe and think that just because you don't do that, you, can, you are better than somebody else. And so what Paul says is that in this, when we grow in the word, when we become more responsible, when we understand what sin really is and understand that all have fallen short of the glory of God, then instead of me looking externally at you, what I should be doing is looking more internally at myself. Can I stop that parenthetically and let somebody know that the word then is not so that you can look 
on others and see what they are doing. It is not so you can see the splinter in somebody else's eye, but what it does then, it causes us to examine ourselves, and the more I know about God, the closer I am to God, the bigger the relationship I have to God, I can't get away with stuff that other folks can get away with. I don't know. I need to stop there and shout for a moment that I thank God that other folks Folks can do it, but God does not allow me to do it. And just because he doesn't allow me to do it, it does not mean I look down on those who do it. I just thank God that God is continuously allowing me to grow. I am every day, I'm trying to grow closer to him. The him knowledge just wrote it best. Draw me nearer. And God, I believe today you're using this coronavirus to draw us nearer. Folks are coming together. Together. People are praising you. Folks that have not mentioned your name is mentioning your name. Uh, governors and all around the world who had it used to be not correct uh, politically to talk about Jesus, they are now talking about Jesus. And if God, that's what you're doing to draw us closer to you. That's what this pericope says. That's what this text says. The text, John, Paul says, don't look down on other folks, but examine yourself and see what God is doing in your life and instead of me looking at you I look internally at myself and so Paul says don't look down on Christian don't look down on those folks who are still drinking especially for those who used to drink you know you was a used to drink Drink folks underneath the table. And just because you don't drink anymore, you look down on those who still drink. Just because you don't smoke anymore, you look at folks that are still smoking. Just because you don't cuss anymore, you look at those who are cussing. But can I tell you how this thing brings together in this Resurrection Sunday morning, we'll find that Jesus, the Son of God, does not criticize others who have messed up. He doesn't go and beat folks down. And if you really look at his ministry, it was about deliverance. It was about healing. And now on this cross that we were just talking about, it was about giving us another chance. Can I stop there? Because somebody missed a shouting moment that God, Jesus does not look at our sin. And though sin is bad, he took on our sin at a place called Calvary. He took on on our sin at a place called Gagatha. He took on our sin and in that taking on our sin, he was there on that cross and we got to understand then that Jesus did not hold it to our account. Thank God that we didn't get what we deserve at the cross called Calvary. That's why we ought to shout. Sometimes we shout about Christmas and I thank God that he was born. But my real shout is on this morning that he died on a cross took my sin and went there and had seven last saying. Seven last saying. The first one was simply Father, forgive them for they know not what they are doing. I thank God that I was included in the first saying. Father, forgive Jeff Robinson for the sins that he has done. Forgive him. And the last saying is very simply, I commit my spirit into thy hand. I thank God today that you ought to come. Come with with me. Come see uh, for yourself. Here's the text. The text then picks up where Paul is saying, I'm one. How could I judge others when I have seen? How can I judge others when I was one of those that went there and was at the feet where the deacon died? I was there when Stephan died. I was there when he was there. I was there when the cloak was put there. But there's been a change in my life. Is there anybody in here today can say there's been a change in my life? And because of that change, I need to come see for myself. Come on, my brothers and my sisters, because there are sometimes there's something so remarkable. I got to see it for myself. It's one thing for other folks to say something about it, but it's another thing for you to see for yourself. Here's where the text from Romans 2 picks up. The, the text picks up where Isaiah 53, Isaiah 53, we understand where he begins to tell us he was wounded. For our transgression, 
it begins to tell us and do it has a prophecy that Jesus himself would die. Jesus himself would be pierced in the side. It prophesies what he was doing. And I thank God today in Isaiah 53, before Jesus was even born down here, God had already set this thing up. When Adam and Eve messed up in the garden, God says, I got to send another man. Where the first Adam messed up in a garden out of tree. The second man, Adam, dies on a tree. Where the first Adam mess up in a garden, Jesus dies on a cross called Golgotha. Where the first man goes out there and messes up and by eating a fruit, the, st- the second Adam st- stands on the cross stretched wide open and said, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. And I thank God in this day today that Jesus did it on the cross. Well, come, come see Ah, uh, Lord, have mercy for yourself. And here's where we're going to go, and I promise I'll leave you, but I'm happy. I'm happy glad. Happy glad on the resurrection Sunday morning that the second Adam, you know, I'm talking about the second Adam, the same as Jesus, the second Adam, because the first Adam, if he had not messed up by the eating the forbidden fruit, we wouldn't have to go through what we had to go through. We wouldn't have to go through corona. We wouldn't have to go through pains. We wouldn't have to have a penalty. But thanks be to God, that's still a problem. And here's where we tie all of that in. And I'll, I'll say fairly well, let you eat your, your resurrection Sunday dinner. But here's where the text picks up now. I want to move you and to the transition to now we're in John chapter 9. Gospel of John chapter 19, I'm sorry. It picks up where Jesus dies on the cross. But there are some folks at the cross. There's his mama at the cross. There's his auntie Mary at the cross, the one that is married to Cleophas. There is another Mary Magdalene, the same one that seven demons have been delivered. That's why my shout is a shout today, that you can come and be, have demons and be demon possessed. But once Jesus comes into your life, the same woman that seven demons came in and lived and resided in, but once she met Jesus, something happened to this Mary Magdalene that she shows up at the cross. But my question is, where are the other folks at? Where are his boys at? Where is Peter? Where is the other people? And the only thing that John begins to say in 19th chapter is that the three Marys was there. Mary, his mama, Mary, his aunt, and Mary Magdalene. But that was one brother, the one that John says, the one whom Jesus loved. Both people at the cross. But look at all all the things that Jesus had done. I'm not trying to beat anybody down, but why I'm what I'm trying to say is that's why Romans 2 is important, is that we can't be critical of other folks because sometimes when you get ready to go through what you got to go through, you got to go through, and the crowd is not going to be your answer. Sometimes when you're trying to get to where God is trying to get you to, he'll leave you with a few folks, but if you got a few folks where the word says two or three Three, gathered in my name all on one accord I'll be in the midst so the text says that Mary is there his mother Mary his aunt is there who is married to Cleopas and then Mary Magdalene the one that has been delivered and John and we know all in those seven last words I talked about the first and I talked about the seventh but in the middle of that was when Jesus looks down and see John he says unto John John behold your mother. Mother, behold your son. That's one of those sayings. And then he goes on a little bit further. Here's my shout. He he, he dies. Y'all, Lord, have mercy. The Bible says he dies, but we got to understand that when he died, the word says that they pierced him in the side. Others had uh, was broken. Other legs were broken. The thief on the left, the thief on the right, they weren't dead yet. That's why, can I tell you, the cross did not kill Jesus. Jesus laid down his life. Others were still alive and they had to break. But so that the scripture might be fulfilled, Jesus himself was already there. He just laid down his life on that seventh saying, Lord, Father, I commit my spirit into your hand. 
the Bible says he died. And here's where Joseph and Nicodemus, you remember Nick, that came to him by night. But when you know God, you will come at night. But when it's time, you will come in the light. I'm finna stop and preach for a moment. Because when you meet Jesus for yourself, you'll be just like Mary Magdalene and was de been delivered. You'll be like Nick. That Nick, remember what Jesus says. You must be born again. And the Bible says they put him in a borrowed tomb. Now I got to take you to chapter 20 so I'm not with you all day. So that those who've not watched church in a while, that you can say that the preacher didn't hold me long. You mean to tell me that a preacher can preach like that in a few minutes and I can still get it, get the word? Yes, sir. Here's the word, chapter 20 of Gospel of John. The Bible says the first day of the week that here comes Mary Magdalene. Now, if you look at the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 28, it says that here's the, both Marys. They come to him, but all of this is entangled together. The first day of week, they come to anoint Jesus because it was Sabbath, and when that was the Sabbath, beginning at 6 o'clock, they could not properly anoint Jesus, and so they were waiting. Lord, have mercy. Can I tell you point number one? When you can come see for yourself, the first thing you got to learn how to do is salvate. Salvate, big word. Wow, Lord, have mercy. You wait. In other words, they were waiting. They know that they, they were well aware that the custom was on the Sabbath day, you couldn't do anything. But can you imagine that the women got together? Can you imagine that they said, I, I don't know where the men were, but the women got together. Can I shout, give a shout out for the sisters that will get together behind the scene, even when there's a stay at home order? Lord, have mercy, because it's a Sabbath day. They still got together. I don't know if they were using a cup going through the window. I don't know how they got it. I don't know if somebody threw a flag, a football made out of paper. I don't know how they got the message, but the message was clear. Early on this resurrection Sunday morning, when the Sabbath is over, we're going to go and anoint Jesus. The Bible says that they get there, and that's why you got to salvate. So somebody says salvate. I still ain't got the best interpretation of salvation. Well, let me show you. I just saw it early this morning. Well, you know, we've got a 140-pound Rockwaller by the name of Sway. And all I have to do this morning, I said, Sway, are you ready to eat? When I, he when I said those words, he started drooling. In other words, he started anticipating that he was about to eat. When you salvate, that means then that you enjoy it before you get it. Lord, have mercy. When you salvate, that means then just at the thought that you're about to do it. They were thinking while it was a Sabbath day that they were going to go and anoint Jesus. When Jesus had done so much for them, they wanted to do something for Jesus. Is there anybody can salvate on the promises that God has given you? That's where I left you on Wednesday night was the prof promise and the prophecy. When God has promised you something, you ought to salvate. Salvate means that you would enjoy it while before it happened. Is there anybody can understand Understand where before I shout in this church today that salvate means Hebrews 11 and 1. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. When you salvate, that means you haven't seen it yet, but you got down in your spirit that if God said it, he meant what he said and he said, Lord have mercy, what he meant. So you got to salvate. Look at your neighbor and say, salvate. Salvate sometime ain't pretty because when swayed salvates. That means he drools. That means he get a little ugly. But the salvate means that I'm gonna. Th I'm thinking about what God said. It may not have happened yet, but I need to stop there and put a pause. It, just because it has happened yet, it will come. And the Bible says that the early in the morning, they come to the sepulcher. They go there. And when they get there, Lord have mercy, they, she looks in. It says that Mary looks in and She's a little astonished because the rock 
or the stone has passed away. I'm getting, I'm getting to point number two, but before I can get to point number two, can I stop there and tell you because some folks get this thing wrong. Some people got bad theology because they think that the stone was rolled away because Matthew gospel said there was an earthquake that shook the place. And in, in John's gospel, it says that the stone was rolled away and Mary looked in. But can I tell you that the stone was not rolled away so that Jesus could get out, but the stone was rolled away so that Mary could look in. Can I shout with somebody today? Because you do know we serve a Jesus that earlier before he was died, he would die. He they were trying to catch him, and he just walks out of stuff. And you do know later after he he got up from the grave, the disciples, Lord have mercy, were gathered together, and the doors were shut. And here comes. Jesus. That's why he's omnipresent. That's why he's omniscient. That's why he's omnipotent. That means then he can be in the same place at the same time. That's why he can get into the prison and nobody lets him in. That's why he can find himself where he, the word says, if you find yourself even in hell, I am there. I need to shout to tell somebody, wherever you are, he can find you. Look at your neighbor and say, he can find you Come uh, and see for yourself. And the Bible says that now point number two. I'm, I'm, I'm happy glad now that he found me in the club. He found me in Greensboro. He found me in High Point. He found me in Winston-Salem. He found me in Charlotte. He found me in Los Angeles. He found me in San Diego. He found me in Vista. He found me in Escadito. He found me when I was out doing my thing but don't look up here at me but you ought to shout where you are at and say thank you that you found me right where I was You, it was ugly but you were pretty it was ugly but you showed up it was dark but you brought some light but here's the text the text says that Mary runs from the grave she runs and she runs into Simon Peter and she runs into John. Now the Bible says that she says, hey, I don't know where they did with Jesus. Here come Peter. Y'all remember Peter because the last time before Jesus died, this same cussing, this same coward, this same cutting Peter had denied Jesus three times. This same Peter in Luke chapter 22 when verse number 60 denies Jesus the third time and in verse 61 it is where the Bible says that Jesus while he's in trial looks over at Peter and said Peter I told you that before the cock crows that you're going to deny me three times but Peter remembered the saying but while he was remembering can I shout for somebody I believe while he was running on the way after he was told by Mary he was was running by Mary Magdalene. He was running to the grave. And I can imagine what Peter was thinking. You mean to tell me that Jesus says, Peter Petros, the Satan wanted to sift you as wheat, but I pray for you that when thou art converted, strengthen your brother. Here come Peter. Can't you see him? Come see for yourself. Here come Peter. He runs to the sepulcher. He gets there and, and the other one is there named John. He looks inside and the Bible says that when he looks inside that he goes there and he doesn't see Jesus. He goes inside, but he sees where they had wrapped him. They see, but on the other side, they see the napkin that was over Jesus' face. It was folded. I'll talk about that in a few moments. But the Bible says that the other one by the name of John, he had to get some courage. Can I stop there and tell you why he had to get some courage? See, Peter was not at the cross. 
Peter didn't see Jesus die. G Peter did not see the, 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 the soldier pissing him in the side. Peter did not see them take down the dead body of Jesus. But, but John was there. And so the Bible says that John got some courage and he looks in. Can I tell somebody, when you've seen some stuff, sometimes it'll scare you. When you've seen some stuff, sometimes you are hesitant. When you've seen some stuff, sometimes you are afraid. But can I tell you, God has not given you the spirit of fear. I need to tell somebody who's scared to go out, follow what the governor says, follow what the CDC says, but when God tell you to go out, God will protect you. The Bible says that John gets inside and he sees what Peter saw. He sees where they had laid him. He sees where the linen was, but on the other side across, he sees the napkin folded. So point number two, if you one, salvate while you wait, but number two, be a solid witness. Well, you know I'm in law enforcement, and the best witness is an eyewitness. The best witness is somebody that saw it for themselves. It's one thing for grandma to see it. It's one thing for mama to see it. But it's something else if you see it for yourself. So come see it. And it's what they saw. They actually saw the napkin folded. Well, I preached this some years ago and brother Robert T had to ask me the question what is the, the symbolism of the napkin being folded? I'm glad you asked the napkin being folded. well when I go out to eat and if I'm done with the meal all I do is I throw the napkin on the table it is a sign to the waiter that I'm done with it but if I fold the napkin and I put it down it's a sign that I'm coming back. Well, you missed a shout moment. The reason why the napkin was over here folded was because Jesus was letting somebody know that yes, the prophecy was fulfilled, that I would be wounded for their transgression. I would be chastised, and yes, I'll be pierced in the side, but the folded napkins represent that I nobody just took me, that I went over here for myself, and I folded the napkin to let you know I'm coming back again because the big prophecy is is that he's coming back. Can I tell somebody that when you can be a solid witness, that means you know God for yourself. You've seen God create miracles. You've seen God save you. In fact, look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, I'm a miracle all by myself. If you knew my story, if you knew the stuff I've been through, if you knew the hell I had, if they knew where I should have been dead, I thank God that I'm a miracle. If you are a miracle, wherever you're at, will you just wave your hand and say, God, thank you that I'm a miracle. I should have been dead and gone. I should have been sleeping in a grave, but because of what you did on the cross, call Calvary. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, come see for yourself. So I I, I got to get out of here. So salvate while you wait. Be a solid witness. But the next thing is be like Mary. Be like Peter. Be like John. Once you've seen him for yourself, go spread the word. They went, Mary said, hey, Peter, I don't know where they laid him. I don't know who took him. Because you do know there's a conspiracy theory that they start lying in Matthew 28, that they start paying money to say that the disciples had stolen Jesus. There's a conspiracy where they wanted to say that somebody took Jesus. But can I stop? there and tell them that nobody took Jesus but Jesus being the anointed one Jesus being the Christos Jesus being the I am that I am Lord have mercy Jesus got up from the grave and if you know the word you ought to spread the word in fact look at your neighbor say neighbor oh neighbor 
even though I'm in a stay at home, I'm gonna spread the word. If I find myself by myself, if nobody else is in the house, then I'm gonna talk to the walls. I could hear C.L. Franklin preach back in the day. If the walls could talk, I wonder what those walls would say. As I get ready to go to my seat, my walls ought to say, when I think of the goodness of Jesus and all he's done for me, my soul, what a soul. Hallelujah. My walls would say, I seen him when he was sick. He went to bed sick, but something got a hold of him early in the morning. He got up waving his hand. Am I talking to anybody in the house today? You went to bed sick. You may have corona. You might have been on oxygen. They may have put you on a ventilator, but God still heal your body. And by your strap eye stripes, you are healed. Look at your neighbor, said, neighbor, can I tell you something? Come see for yourself. Come see that he walks with me. If my walls could talk, they would say something every now and then gets a hold of him. Nobody is in the house. I catch him in the shower talking about amazing grace. How sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found. Then they go to my living room, and the walls in the living room is they say every now and then, nothing is going on, but tears start protruding down my face. And they said, I don't know. The wall says, I don't know what got hold of him. But all of a sudden, he cries when he should be laughing. Then I get to the other room. When I get to the other room, the wall says, every now and then, no music is playing. Nothing is going on. But I see him dancing all over the place. I get to the other room and the kitchen says while he's cooking while there's fire on the stove every now and then I hear him speaking in an unknown tongue every now and then I hear him say when the fire is burned I can hear my wall says as I lean out of the foyer the wall says He's blessed when he go out, and he's blessed when he come back in. If the walls could talk, well, let me leave y'all alone. But can I tell somebody, Jesus goes to his boys. Jesus, go see Peter. And he says, I promise you that if I is torn down, if I be lifted up, I'll draw all men under me. Yeah, yeah. Come, 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 come. See for yourself what the Bible says. As I get on out of here, there was one that was missing by the name of Thomas. Now I used to look at Thomas in a bad way but now when I see the text I look at Thomas in the right way Thomas says it's all right for Peter to tell me it's all right for John to tell me but I I gotta see it for myself, Thomas says, until I see his hand, I won't believe. 
and here come Jesus here's my shout he says Thomas just says you couldn't believe you can touch where they put me the spear you can touch where they nail me on the cross can I tell somebody I feel like Thomas he touched me and oh the joy of my soul something happened and now I know he touched me and now I'm no longer the same if he touched you clap your hands if he touched you wave your hand but right where you're at if he touched you stand up stand up stand up on your feet and raise your hands and say he the same come see for yourself salvate while you wait be a solid witness and thirdly spread the logos word that he got up from the grave with all power in his hand the doors of the church is open maybe there's somebody that as he found you in the club he found you drinking he found you a whoremonger but however he found you he doesn't hold that to you he says in Romans 10 and 9 that if thou would confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in thy heart that God has raised Christ from the dead, thou shalt be saved. Somebody's out there this morning, you feel by yourself. You had a crowd when you had money. You had a crowd when you had a job. You had a crowd when you could feed them. You had a crowd when everything was going right. But now it seems that everything is going wrong. And the same folks that you did for them, hasn't, they turned their back on you. You feel like Jesus now. I was with my inner circle, and my inner circle left me. But I brought some good news from Juniper Level. God will never leave you. Don't be upset with the crowd. Be in love with your Savior. He saved you. He, want, he didn't want a crowd around you because the crowd has distracted you and caused you to not see Jesus. But the altar is open. And if you're wondering where the altar is, the altar is right where you're at now. Whether you're driving, whether you're at your house, what, is, what are the walls, interior walls saying about you this morning? Are you lifting up hands? Are you crying out to God? God, I messed up, but I need you like I never needed you before. If you can forgive Peter, if you can forgive the one that denied you three times, if you can forgive the one that says he'll go with you and you had to remind him that foxes have holes and birds have nests, if you can forgive him for cutting off a Malchus ear and you had to put it back, if you can forgive him, surely you can forgive me. Right where you're at, will you accept Jesus as your Savior? As they're playing in the rear Will you come to Jesus? How do I do it, preacher? Just confess. Just ask him into your heart. Just ask him, say, God, come into my heart. Save me today. Just, just save me because, God, with coronavirus and everything else, this COVID-19, I, 
I need to know God. If I die today, I need to know that you have eternal life. And, and I heard your word says that I can have eternal life. I can hear your word that says that that's why Jesus came, so that I might have eternal life. Come, come, wherever you're at, just come to your altar. Invite him into your life. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I hear you talking. I hear you speaking. I hear you speaking. I hear you speaking. I hear you. Sweet Jesus. I hear you, Jesus. I hear you. I see you. Sweet Jesus. I hear you. I hear you. Sweet Jesus. All over in Australia. All over I'm in Africa. So Everywhere your people are. You died for me. I hear you, God. You died for us. I'm so glad. I'm so glad, God. Shed your blood for me. Yes, God. So glad. Aren't you glad this morning? You rose for me. I'm so glad you rose for me. Sweet Jesus. Sweet Jesus. Sweet Jesus. Sweet. Come on. Jesus. Come on, sister. I know he left you. Sweet. I know you're trying to raise your family by yourself, but you're not by yourself. I know your bed is empty, but God will still comfort you. Come on, brother. I know you messed up. I know, I know, I know. You've been down this road before. I know you came back, but you went back out. He's not going to hold that against you. He says, just come on, come on, come on. I know you're drunk last night, but he doesn't care about what you did last night. He says this morning, come on. I know you're still on drugs, but he says, I can deliver you from drugs. If I can deliver Mary Magdalene with seven demons inside of her, what is your problem? What is your, is, is there anything too hard for God? I declare deliverance in your life today. I declare you can get off the cracks. I can declare, declare you can get off the heroin. I can declare if you have Jesus, he'll help you. He'll help you be faithful. He'll help you stay right where you need to stay. I'm so glad you died for me. Aren't you glad he died for you? I'm so glad I'm so glad he shed your blood. He shed for blood for me. me. Yes, God. So glad. Yeah, I'm so glad. Yeah, yeah. You rose for me. We accept him. Sweet. For those who accepted him. I want you to I want you to come Sweet. and I want you to reach out to the church. Sweet. Our phone. Our phone number is there, 919-779-6401. If, if you've accepted him, I personally want to know that you've accepted Jesus Christ. You can shout, send an instant message, send a message to us on Facebook. We'll respond to you. And if you are looking for a church home, after all of this stuff that has gone on, you need a church. You need somebody praying for you. You don't need to have to go look if something happened to you. Look for a preacher or somebody to, to go out and to, 
to do the committal. You can have, you can be part of this church. Not that you're dying anytime soon, but you need a church home. There are benefits to being part of a ministry. Juniper Level Missionary Baptist Church. Call us. Hit us up on Facebook. However you need to do it. But personally, I want to invite you to accept Jesus Christ as your personal Savior. I would love to be your pastor. We're not perfect, but we're trying to live like God would have us to live. And in times like these, you need a Savior. Is that one? Is that two? Is that three? 10, 20. And maybe you're saying, Pastor, I don't live in Raleigh. I live in another state. I live in another country. Well, you can be part of our virtual community. I want to invite you to be part of Juniper Level community. I still will be your pastor, but maybe you're in another state, but we can still be your pastor. In fact, the truth of the matter is we have members all over the United States. And so I want to invite you to come and just give me a shout and say, Pastor, I, I want to join Juniper Level Missionary Baptist Church. I want to be part of this ministry. I want to have a covering over my life. And that covering, I believe, is going to keep me when I can't keep myself. I thank you for that. I end by saying to you, I love you. There's nothing you can do about it. But the key thing is, Jesus loves you so much that he died on the cross just for you. Man, woman, boy, or girl. You don't have to go through by yourself. I'm Jeff Robinson, and I serve as pastor of Juniper Level Missionary Baptist Church. Man, I would love for you to call us, 919-779-6401. I'd love for you to come on Facebook. I would love for you to come on Tuesday evening and be at our Bible study. I would love for you to come on Wednesday and be with us on Bible study. I would love for you to call on Thursday and be with our Bible study. I'd love to see you again next week. I love you, man and woman of God. You shall live and not die in Jesus' name. Lord, we worship you, Jesus. I thank you, yeah, Jesus. For oh, the name of Jesus. Oh, thank you, Lord, Jesus. Oh, thank you, Lord. With my mouth, I speak to you. With my heart, I sing to you. With my soul, I give to you. All of the praise, I say thank you for everything. For all the things you've done. For the battles you fought for me. For the victories won With my mouth I speak to you With my heart I sing to you
Oh!